What's up, people? Welcome back to my creative crossover series. If you haven't seen the two that I posted already, basically this series is where I try to take lessons that I've learned in one creative pursuit and show how they can give you some new perspectives on another. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that musicians know that might help you draw a little better. Today I'm also going to be featuring the YouTube channel of Rick Beato. Rick's a fantastic guy, he knows music inside and out, and his videos are just fascinating to me. That is smooth. So one thing that musicians tend to do right when they're learning is targeted practice. Rick puts this rather eloquently. Don't practice what you know, practice what you don't know. Musicians are always trying to learn new scales, new chords, new styles, new songs, new changes, new techniques. I'm sure when you draw, you sometimes try to draw new things, but do you actually focus your practice in that way? A musician's practice routine is almost completely focused on things that you're not good at yet. But I can't tell you how many times I see somebody's sketchbook full of the same themes, drawing the same things in the same way, in the same style, with the same colors. Trying to make this perfect little sketchbook while staying nice and safe and warm in your comfort zone. But wouldn't you learn a lot more if you made a bad sketchbook? A sketchbook where from the front cover to the back cover it's just packed with things that you're trying to draw that you don't know how to draw yet. The stuff you suck at. This forces you out of your comfort zone and it forces you to learn and it forces you to become a better artist. And as you go through this process and you improve the range of things that you can draw, one day you'll be able to draw anything you can imagine. Ah, oh, I just love a dark creamy beer. Another thing that musicians do in order to become better musicians is a practice called transcription. Transcription is basically just listening to something and then trying to write it out and copy it and play it for yourself. This is so common in the world of music. If there's a solo that you want to learn, you need to transcribe it and pick it apart and find out what kind of scales and keys and what was the artist doing that made that solo have that certain feel or how did it step out of key here and step back or what was that crazy shift that you just heard. It's important to transcribe music because it makes you pair all of the theory type stuff that you might be learning on paper with what you actually hear. It puts the things that you're learning in context and allows you to build a bigger vocabulary and to stretch yourself into places that from an academic standpoint you didn't realize were the next thing for you. But what about visual artists? I mean, when we're drawing, it's kind of frowned upon a lot of the time to totally just copy someone else's work, right? But if you really love some elements of their style and you want to bring home some new lessons for yourself, why don't you try to copy another artist's work? Why don't you copy it over and over until you feel like you really got it right? Imagine all of the new concepts that you would internalize that way. And as you learn this stuff by copying these artists, you're going to naturally bring your own history to it. And from that point forward, you'll have added another little something that you can bring forward into your own work and your own unique perspective. While we're on a roll here with learning techniques, there's another one from the world of music that I think would help. Often as a musician, especially if you play covers or if you're a session musician, you're forced to learn all of these different genres and styles. But in the end, this makes you a better musician. It makes you more well-rounded. It makes you more capable of crafting your own unique voice. How many bands can you think of or artists that you listen to that took one genre and blended it with another in a way that was unexpected and new, and before you knew it, there's a new form of music out there and it's just really speaking to you. But artists I see again and again trying to pigeonhole themselves into one style, into one medium. Trying to cram all of their ideas into one genre or one subject matter. Have you thought of the things that you might learn just from trying other styles of drawing, even maybe styles you don't like so much? Maybe you like to make loose, freeform sketches. Try architectural drafting, see how the other half lives. 
If you like to draw comic books, why don't you try some abstract expressionism and see what kind of life that breathes back into your work? Or maybe you're a very technical artist and you like every line to be perfect. Why not try seeing what a brush and an ink and some Japanese calligraphy will bring to you? The point is, is if you really want to broaden yourself as an artist, stop focusing just on the genres and the styles and the techniques that you like the most and start trying the things that you don't like or that you haven't thought of or that you don't think that you'd be good at. Because I guarantee they're going to bring home some new lessons for you. All right, well, that's enough about ways to practice. Let's talk about an interesting musical concept that I don't see paralleled that often in the visual arts. And that's the concept of dissonance. Dissonance is the tension that's created by a note that doesn't quite fit into the harmony around it. And musicians know that dissonance is the key to bringing tension or suspense or different emotion to your music. Just think about the blue note in the blues. It's the one note that fits the least into the harmonic structure of the song. And it's the one that brings the most soul. Think about this next time you're drawing. Maybe you have a nice harmonious color palette and then you just accent with one color that doesn't fit and use that to make a statement. Or totally contrast the texture and the style of one subject in a drawing to make it stand out and say something unique about it. I think you might find that if you play around with this, that one little blue note that you create might be the thing that puts all of the soul into your piece that was missing. Ah, damn, that's good. All right, for the last one, just for fun, I want to talk about theme and variation. Arguably, this is something that a lot of visual artists already do, but I don't know if we're thinking about it in the same way. In music, the structure of theme and variation is where a musical theme, a melody, or a chord progression, or a rhythm, or whatever is established, and then it's iterated upon with different tempos, different instrumentations, different variations of that theme. And this progression will evolve and transform and change over time, and a lot of the time return back home to the original theme in the end. Check out Rick's video if you want to hear what that sounds like in action. Now originally theme and variation was kind of a classical concept. You'll hear a lot of older pieces that are done that way, but it's also the root of a lot of improvisational music of today. One tool in the jazz soloist's toolbox is to take a melody and repeat it and evolve it and change it and try it in different ways and phrase it with a different emotion. And this is a great way to bring the, the hook of the piece into the solo, but still make it your own. It's also used quite a lot in film scoring. If you listen to, say, John Williams and the Star Wars theme or the music from Indiana Jones, you'll hear all of these different themes that relate to different characters, different moods, different places. These motifs will appear again and again, slower, quieter, faster, in all of these different ways in order to draw an emotion that fits that particular moment in the movie, but still tie back to the central theme that was established in the beginning. So how do we apply a concept like this to something like our drawing? Well, maybe next time you're developing a character, try them in all of these different styles. Try them in different outfits, different variations. Channel your inner Monet and approach the same scene like he did with his haystacks and his water lilies in different seasons and different lighting conditions. And a lot of the time, especially in classical music, theme and variation was based on the work of another composer. So why not try remixing someone else's drawings in different styles and see what kind of unique stuff you come out with in the end? This one I know was a little bit more fun, maybe a bit of a stretch. It wasn't exactly a fundamental of music, but I just thought it would be really fun to throw in there and it kind of got me thinking, so I hope maybe it'll get you thinking too. Thanks once again for hanging out with me. I hope that this series inspires you and breathes a little fresh air into your art. If you'd like to learn more about these musical concepts, I can't recommend enough that you check out Rick Beato's channel. He demonstrates music theory in a way that I find really enjoyable, even when the topic is completely over my head. He doesn't hold back on sharing his secrets, and his understanding of music really is next level. I put a playlist together for you, so check it out in the description if you guys want to go a little deeper on that. 
If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure that you catch the rest of the series as it comes out and all the other videos that I make. They're all about creativity and your personal artistic development. And if you loved this video, please don't be stingy. Share it with some of your creative friends to help me spread the word. All right, gang, until next time, peace.